Hello and welcome to another AFCB TV preview show. Once again, I'm joined by our match day commentator Chris Temple and we'll be talking all things AFC Bournemouth on today's show. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at last weekend's 2-1 defeat against Manchester United. We'll also be discussing the week that Callum Wilson's had. And finally, we'll be turning our attention to tomorrow's game against Newcastle United. But before all of that, let's go back a week and look at highlights of last weekend's 2-1 defeat to Manchester United here at Vitality Stadium. Here are the short highlights. Stanislas to deliver, away to our right. Raises his left arm, delivers it now. Steve Cook goes to ground under challenge, but referee Tierney not interested. Lewis Cook, lovely ball to Stanislas, onside, square it goes! Yeah! Wilson! The Cherries, man of the moment, just keeps on finding form. And Wilson presses those England claims. Just that little bit further, and Bournemouth strike first against United. Stanislas the provider, Wilson scores for the seventh time this season, 1-0 Bournemouth. Here's Sanchez for Young on the right-hand side. Young takes it to the corner of the penalty area. Sanchez now on the right. Sanchez across. Chance for Martial, and it's 1-1. Martial found the net on his left foot, and he has come up with the equaliser. His fifth goal in his last four Premier League appearances, and that has extricated Manchester United from a big spot of bother here. 1-1. Apologies for the technical gremlins on BBC Radio Solent and John Murray in position from Five Live to call that Manchester United equaliser. What a disappointing moment as they've all came down the right-hand side and Martial on the penalty spot there with two men desperately throwing themselves in the way but it, it came down the United right and that is uh, not what Bournemouth deserved, Willow, in its first uh, 35 minutes. Pogba, left side of the penalty area here, faced by Steve Cook, Pogba getting to the byline, in comes a cross, Rashford takes it down, Adam Smith's in there, and Marcus Rashford has found a 90-second minute winner, surely for Manchester United. Well, there we go, a late winner from Marcus Rashford saw Manchester United go away with all three points. You can watch extended highlights for free on AFCB TV. Well, Chris, they were so close to a point last week, but it wasn't quite meant to be. I deserved a point as well, I think. Um, and just the, you know, the, the nature of that winner as well, so frustrating. It's bounced back off Adam Smith there and, and Marcus Rashford just tucks it in. Uh, you know, Nathan Ake was so, so gutted after the game. And it just shows you what it means to the players. He was, I think that he had been actually in tears at one point um, about his role in the goal. I mean, I had to watch it about two or three times to see what he was so upset about. I mean, he just, he just didn't head the ball away. But I mean, there's no one's pinning any blame on him. But I think what it did tell us is how much the players care and how much they feel they can compete with these big teams. Um, and the first oh, the first half hour, goodness me, that is some of the best football. I, I think that's the best half an hour Bournemouth have produced in the Premier League. That's that's how high, I, highly I would rate it. Eddie's thought it was you know, one of the best halves uh, under his managership as well. Um, and United were were all over the place and then you look at you know United have gone to Juventus and turned them over in, in midweek by the same scoreline also but with a late goal as well away from home so basically Bournemouth are as good as Juventus that's what we've uh, we've worked out from that but I think the, forgetting the last minute goal which is it is a heartbreaker when you've been on such a good run um, the key for that now is not to become into a negative run where they 
go and lose again this weekend and, and then go into the international break with everyone all a bit down, forgetting how good that first half hour was because that's going to have had quite a few people taking up, uh, sitting up and taking notice of, of Bournemouth's start. I think it, a few people would have been saying, right, well, Bournemouth have started well, but let's see what they've got against some of the big guns now. And they had a lot against the big guns. The, the, the play, as I say, in the first half hour was amazing and probably they could have had another goal um, in that spell, which would have you know, might have put a different complexion on the game and would have given United certainly a few problems. But you've got to credit United. They changed it around in the second half. Experienced manager knew what he needed to correct. And ultimately, they are a class team. And that, unfortunately, even though it was slightly fortuitous, uh, came to the fore in the end. Well, you talked there about the first half an hour. What was it for you that made it so special? I just think it was the confidence that they were playing with. I mean, sometimes you can be sort of overawed by playing the big teams. I'm not saying Bournemouth have been, but sometimes, you know, you get on that stage and all of a sudden you're up against, you know, 15 players instead of 11, it feels like, when you're playing a team as, as good as the, the top Premier League teams are. And let's not forget, they're not top Premier League teams, they're top European teams and in some senses, some of the top teams in the world. So to have players of the quality that United have got running around, Paul Pogba, you know, Jeff and Lerma was all over him in the first half. Even people in form like Anthony Martial were completely shut down in the first half and mainly going the other way. You know, experienced defenders were, were chasing shadows. Callum Wilson getting in behind um, and obviously getting his goal, which was great for him on the big stage as well. So I just think it was the, the, the swagger that Bournemouth were able to play with. The swagger we've seen them play with this season, it was there. Um, unfortunately, ultimately, it didn't last 90 minutes, but that's football. And Jose Mourinho said in his post-match press conference that he thought his side were very lucky in the first half. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think they were, but it's always it's easier for managers to come out with nice comments when they've won, uh, particularly in that in that nature as well. And I think he said to Eddie it should have been six-two at half time or something, which you know if, if every shot went in, it probably should have been. But I'm not sure what you'd have heard from Mourinho if it, if it had been one-one. I'm not sure you'd have uh, maybe heard such niceties. But uh, as we saw at Juventus when he walked on the pitch at the end of the game, he uh, he's got a bit of character when he wins, put it that way, and uh, he's a bit of a nightmare when they lose. So yeah, I, I think they, they were fortunate to be uh, still in the game at half time, but. As I say, unfortunately, if you don't take your chances, particularly against those teams, then it, it can come back to, uh, to bite you. And of course, there's some big games coming up in the next few weeks. We've got Arsenal, Manchester City, Liverpool. It's great confidence for the side to be going into those. Yeah, games. And I think that's the message that people have got to take out of it, is that, that even though it was no points, uh, it was a great performance for half an hour, you know, 40 minutes. Um, and that will give them some confidence and they'll need to have it going into those games because, as you say, once Newcastle is out of the way this week, and I say out of the way in the, the nicest possible respect because it shouldn't be the same challenge, you know, the way they've been playing, albeit they won last week. Um, but yeah, straight back after the break, Arsenal uh, followed by Manchester City um, and then, there's, you know, you've got Chelsea in the Cup as well, Liverpool in there as well, as you say. So um, yeah, that, that sort of confidence, albeit in defeat, is going to be very, very important in those games. Well, one man who got on the score sheet last week was Callum Wilson, and we'll be talking about his week in just a moment. But before we do all of that, let's look back at all of his goals so far this season. San Francis. Wilson! 2 0 and surely game over now for Cardiff. Callum Wilson, all smiles. Oh, he's taken that nicely, Wilson, but he's all on his own. Pass one, pass two, brilliant goal! What a majestic solo goal from Callum Wilson! It was him against five defenders. And corner left-hand side in front of the North Stand, 2-2. In it comes, the heads are up, and it is a winner! And it is Callum Wilson, who was denied a second ago! And Derek Williams' moment of madness isn't enough for Blackburn. Fraser, and it's been picked off by Callum Wilson, Wilson gets in on the act, it's a fourth for Bournemouth, a shake of the head from Ben Foster. Callum Wilson is a man in form, and the form continues, Bournemouth's eye-catching start to the season goes on. Just that going on that run, obviously confidence. Now here's Wilson who can tie it all up nicely for Bournemouth and he does. The Bournemouth boys are sparkling in front of goal yet again. Lewis Cook, lovely ball to Stanislas, onside, square it goes, Callum yeah! Wilson! The Cherries man of the moment just keeps on finding form and Wilson presses those England claims. Just 
that little bit further and Bournemouth strike first against United. Stanislas the provider. Wilson scores for the seventh time this Well, what a season he is having and he'll be back in action tomorrow at St James's Park. Chris, he got his 50th goal for the club last week. That's that's quite an accolade, isn't it? Great little milestone for him. Um, yeah, it's and what a stage again to, to get it on. Um, and it's, I think that was nice for him to, to score, particularly with all of the England talk, which now has, has come true as well. Uh, for him to do it, that game was live on the telly as well. Lots of people will have been... Now, lots of people won't have heard of Callum Wilson to, to much extent. They'll have probably seen his name, you know, in the paper at scoring goals. But that's the thing about Bournemouth. They do do quite a lot of their work under the radar. If you're one of the supporters of the big teams, you, you don't really take a lot of notice of the of some of the smaller teams in the division. So a lot of his work will have gone unnoticed this season. And all of a sudden, you know, people start talking about him for England. Everyone's like, hang on a minute, this, this Callum Wilson now, let's have a little look at him. He's on the telly and he scored, you know, against Manchester United. Uh, Terrorised them for, as we say, half an hour. So, yeah, a nice little round number, a nice game to get it in. Um, and goodness me, what a, what a huge week it's been for him in, with the England call-up as well. And uh, he, he's very, I know, we, I've spoken to him a short time ago, the, the club have as well. It's He's very level-headed about tomorrow's game is the focus at the moment. Um, go to Newcastle, continuing the fine work that he's been doing in, in the red and black shirt. And then after that, he can start to think about England. But I think it's hard not to when you've been chasing something all of your career and it comes along. And it, this morning has been the first chance he's had to, to sort of meet the lads as well since he got announced because the players had a day off on Thursday. So uh, he was sort of at home. He said his phone was going crazy. But um, yeah, all in all, brilliant for him. And that call up six goals, seven assists this season, it's so well deserved, isn't it? Yeah, uh, again, his all round game. I, we said to Eddie, you know, what's been the difference in him this season that, that sort of got him noticed? And the thing Eddie was keen to, to point out was not just his goals, his, as we've spoken before, everything else he's contributing. Uh, and I think he's different as well. I think he is a little bit different to, to what England have got. Um, he compared himself a little bit. He said the closest thing that England have probably had to him would be Jamie Vardy in terms of getting in behind and a, a bit of, you know, a bit of strength as well as pace as well. Um, and he said he likes to think he's sort of a, a younger improved version of Jamie Vardy in the nicest possible way who of course has retired from international football so he, he's certainly different to what England have got and Danny Welbeck unfortunately for him has, has suffered an injury obviously yesterday for Arsenal so in a way that nudges Callum probably one little step up the uh, up the queue in terms of his likelihood of getting on the pitch uh, against USA and Croatia over the next couple of weeks so uh, yeah from that point of view I think and I think he's made himself hard to ignore you know, you can't start the way the season the way he has, um, particularly with England, you know, not exactly settled at the moment. They're trying a few different people out. You're an Englishman, you're one of the top performers in the Premier League. Uh, he couldn't be left out, I don't think. And the friendly against the USA, that's a really good opportunity for him to get on, isn't it? Hopefully and get some minutes. Yeah, it would seem like it. It would seem like a great opportunity. USA, not one of the superpowers of, of world football. They're going through quite a lot of transition themselves at the moment. They're blooding quite a few youngsters on this European trip as well. So that does have the look of a, a nice game to get involved. I know Gareth Southgate's comments uh, at his press conference uh, sort of intimated that maybe, he, I think he said, we'll have a look at him in training, which a few people took to read that he wasn't going to get on the pitch. But I think that's just, you know, he's, he's got to train before he plays. So I wouldn't say take that as a, as a as a red that he won't play. Um, but hopefully that will be a nice chance for him to get on the pitch. I think, uh, I think, not sure if the FA have been managing to sell too many tickets for that game. So uh, from a, a commercial point of view, maybe a few more Bournemouth fans might turn up at Wembley on, uh, on Thursday night. And of course the Wayne Rooney side show as well. So, um, but yeah, if he can get on, I think that's a great opportunity for him. And the likes of Gary Lineker and Alan Shearer have said how delighted they are for him. That's nice for him on a personal note, isn't it? Yeah, and I think, again, the sort of the, the, the spotlight of being highlighted on Match of the Day and things, yeah, it's, it's only a TV programme, but it does count for quite a bit. You know, if, if the big guns are starting to talk you up and, and make your case and and highlight your performances and, and things, that will get a few more people taking notice as well who maybe haven't seen a lot of Bournemouth. So to have strikers of the quality and the, the legend of England status of Gary Lineker and Alan Shearer uh, back in your case and then congratulating you. That's a, that's a great feeling for someone like Callum Wilson, yeah. Well, next up for Callum Wilson and AFC Bournemouth is a trip to St James's Park. It was quite a day last year, so let's have a look at the short highlights. Shelby, not sure he really wanted that from Hayden. Chance for a Bournemouth break. Here's Wilson. Now Ibe. King is at the back. Ibe was trying to get to the bide line so he could try and chip it his way. Richie. Richie has a go! And it is, well, I thought at first tipped wide by Begovic, and after a bit of thought, the referee agrees.
stumble from Ake doesn't help Bournemouth here. Richie. Good block. It's going to be a Newcastle corner. It was very nearly a Newcastle goal for Dwight Gale. When you think about the game that they lost at Burnley on Monday night, they were creating more chances in that one too. Oh, it's another good drive and another good peg of its save. Played it straight against Wilson. That's another good shot, and the rebound is in this time, but it won't count. The flag is up for offside against Dwight Gale. Francis has charged past him. Simon Francis hooks it across, and Elliott has to stretch to save. Sells has got the green light to take the field again. And he was maybe just playing Bournemouth onside. It's King who bustles through, and Elliott who stops the shot. So it's Newcastle with the first couple of kicks of the ball of the second half. King, Wilson onside, and in on goal. It's Callum Wilson, and he's missed the target, would you believe? Good ball into the feet of King. Can King find Pugh? He's done that, Pugh in, and well held Rob Elliott. In goes Francis. Here's Pugh. Not decisive, that from Manquillo, Pugh's onto it, Pugh! Off the post with Pugh celebrating, he thought it was in, he thought he'd scored the winner. Rob Elliott did brilliantly for Newcastle. Again, it'll go over him, it's headed in though, behind him, Steve Cook came in to head it in. Bournemouth have nicked it in the second minute of injury time. <laughs> Newcastle in a bit of disarray at the back, nobody else needed to touch it. It's Cook who watches it and times his jump to perfection over the top of two defenders to put the ball past Rob Elliott. Look at Cook's movement. Out to in and out again, but the ball's in and it's Newcastle United nil, AFC Bournemouth one. Well, a last minute winner from Steve Cook there. Cherries fans will be hoping for the same thing again tomorrow. Chris, slightly different circumstances for the game tomorrow, but how do you see it playing out? Yeah, that was a great day last year. So it's a long drive home from Newcastle for Cherries fans, but when you've scored a last-minute winner to win 1-0, um, it, it would have, uh, I guess, shortened the journey a little bit. They'd have been talking about that for quite a few uh, hours on the way home. Uh, yeah, a, a shame for Newcastle in a, uh, that Newcastle, in a way, have just got that win out of the way because uh, maybe that's just the, the sort of kick up the backside their season needed because they'd started awfully uh, from, from their point of view. Um, they'd lost all five home games before that in the Premier League, which, you know, for a ground like in James's part, you see that as a tough place to go as an away team, but it's been anything but this season. So, uh, timing-wise, unfortunate they got that win. You know, Watford are a good side. They didn't have a good day against Bournemouth, but they're they're a decent side. So that's a good win for them. The one thing that might help Bournemouth out is that three of their key players went, went off injured last week and looked like they're probably not going to be fit. So John Joe Shelby, who always has an impact, Jamal Lascelles, their captain, who's been a bit of an inspiration as well, uh, and uh, their, their Japanese uh, signing as well. So they all are, are big doubts for tomorrow. May not play, which means a bit of a uh, bit of sort of upheaval in terms of uh, the the stability of the team that he's been playing. Of course, they've got a certain lad called uh, young Matthew Ritchie, who uh, Bournemouth fans know well, who's just sort of sidestepped from Scotland duty in the last couple of days. So uh, he won't be showing a pitch with Ryan Fraser in uh, Scotland colours over the next couple of weeks. Um, but as we get some Newcastle weather here as well, for sure, let's hope it's not like this tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's all in all, tough place to go, but Bournemouth have won there both times they've been there in the Premier League. A 3-1 win a couple of seasons ago and 1-0 last season. So it's been a happy hunting ground. 
And we saw, as with Southampton here, the teams down the bottom side of the, of the table, not always easy. No, very much so. Um, Bournemouth have got a little stat they'd like to sort of uh, notch into the record books. They've never won three Premier League away games in a row. So this would be a, a nice one, having won at Fulham and, and Watford and scored seven goals in the process and kept clean sheets in both as well. But, you know, it's funny because Newcastle came to Southampton and drew nil-nil and did exactly what Southampton did when they came here and drew nil-nil. So I think Newcastle away compared to Newcastle home uh, are two different propositions, really. Um, but they have got some ability in their team. You know, they've, they certainly have. Um, and they've got a good manager who knows what he's doing. But as is always the case at the big grounds, if you can get the fans turned on their players early on, if they all of a sudden can very quickly forget they won last week, um, then that will give Bournemouth a good chance. But big pitch there as well. Um, it's proved a happy hunting ground, so I don't see any reason why it couldn't be again tomorrow. And you mentioned seven goals in the last two away games. That's brilliant for confidence going into the game, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, as good as any. Um, see what we're putting ourselves through here for you, by the way, watching AFCV TV. Look, this is, this, we're not even just uh, canning it. Um, yeah, confidence-wise, free-flowing football, exactly what we saw in the first half hour here last week. Two clean sheets uh, away from home. It would be nice to get a another clean sheet away from home because they've been really hard to come by. And let's not forget Bournemouth only won four away games all last season. They've already won three this season, so they would equal last season's tally if they were to, uh, to win. And just finally, Joshua King, he remains in doubt. How much of a boost will it be if he does play? Yeah, hard to know whether he'll be back. But again, the way the team's been playing, they haven't massively missed him in the last uh, the last couple of games. Um, but you always want a player of his quality in your team. So, uh, yeah, it would be nice if he's back. I'm keeping this answer short because it's getting very wet. <laughs> well, in light of that, that is all we've got time for today. If you are going to St James's Park, have a very safe journey. And if not, we'll see you in a couple of weeks here against Arsenal. Thanks for joining us.